In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Beloved, I will be uh, incorporating both Luke's Gospel and John's Gospel in my sermon. Um, I do have John's Gospel quoted, and so you will hear that as I go through the sermon. No doubt the question was debated among them whether he was the Christ. Many were waiting for him. Many were anxiously expecting him. It is true, not all who were interested in his advent were earnestly awaiting his kingdom. There were other thoughts occupying their minds besides those of the kingdom of God. They, the priests and Levites, were spiritually blind and failed to see that first John the Baptist is the witness of Christ, the anointed one of God, and second, that Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. And as God's, John's Gospel says, and this is the testimony of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask, who are you? John the Baptist was no obscure prophet in the wilderness who wore camel's hair and ate locust. John the Baptist was known by all Jerusalem, so much so that high-ranking temple officials came out to see him. Now this wasn't some meet and greet, some get to know you. They weren't gonna play guess who at family night with John the Baptist. No, they wanted to know who he was, as in what role did he have to play in the end times? Was he in the anointed one? That is, was he the Christ who would inaugurate this kingdom of God that they waited for for so long? Or was he Elijah who would point to the Christ? Or was he the prophet like Moses? In order to find out, the Pharisees sent out the Levites and the priests to interrogate John the Baptist, to ask him question after question in order to find out what role he had to play in the last days. Now the temple officers, the Levites, and the priest went to John the Baptist and interrogated him with questions. In response, John the Baptist gave a con fateful confession. He gave them the answers to their fundamental question, who are you? Now John the Baptist does not leave the inquirers there. He tells them who he is. He does not simply say no to each question as you will soon hear. So the Levites and the priests came to him and said, who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? The interrogation reflects a deep concern for the final days, the last days when Christ would return and restore his kingdom. Clearly, the Jewish religious authorities thought John had an important role to play. Either he was the Christ who would rule as the king on David's throne, or he was the one who would reveal Christ to the Israelites. This concern wasn't just confined to all religious halls, to the temples, to academic circles of Jewish theologians. No, it was concern of everyday people in Jerusalem, as Luke tells us in his gospel. As the people were in expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ. John gives them all an answer. He is not the Christ. Frustrated, they go on to guess. Elijah? Here John, in his humility, denies that he is not Elijah that Malachi spoke of. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the great and awesome day of the Lord. The text isn't clear whether John thinks he is the prophet or not. I think that he does not aware, is not aware that he's the prophet, because our Lord goes on to say, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And Christ says, if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears, let him hear. So finally, the religious leaders asked their final question, are you the prophet? And here the priests and Levites are thinking of our Old Testament lesson that we heard from Deuteronomy that says, 
the Lord your God will rise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from among your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. According to Deuteronomy, God promised to raise up for Israel a prophet like Moses, in whose mouth God would proclaim his word. The absence of prophecy existed from the last prophet Malachi all the way up until John the Baptist. There was this period in which there was nothing said by God. The people of Israel were left in silence. But the coming prophecy, therefore, was a sign of God's renewed favor of coming redemption. The lively expectation that the final prophet would initiate a new exodus, be like Moses, lead the people out away from the occupation of Rome. For them, the new Moses, the Christ, would be the hope that they had been looking for. And so they wanted to know, was it John the Baptist? So what does John the Baptist tell them? In frustration, they needed to know who he was. And so he says to them, I am the voice crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. And all the answers to his questions, no, I am not the Christ, no, I am not the prophet like Moses, no, I am not Elijah. But he is the voice crying out in the wilderness. He is the one who prepares the way of the Lord. And so this is John's role to play in the final days that we find ourselves in. If you recall in the opening first chapter of John, that famous chapter about Christ being the Word, and you will remember that John the Baptist is the witness to the Word, the witness to Christ. And so because of this, John is a model for every preacher like me, for those who are aspiring ordination like me. And his preaching, he desired to be a voice of the Lord, to stand firm in his confession, to speak the truth about the sacraments, about the word of God, and about all things therein. He was a preacher who feared God, and therefore was not afraid of man, and was steadfast in his confession, in his confession that the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, is the only way to the Father. And so it is our hope that our preachers and our synod remain like John the Baptist, steadfast in their confession. In effect, John the Baptist confesses to the priest and to the Levites that he is the voice prophesied in Isaiah. Again, I am the voice crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. After denying that he was the Christ, after denying that he was Elijah, and after denying he was the prophet like Moses, the Pharisees and the Levites and the priests were getting frustrated. They wanted to know more. And so they asked him, inquired about his authority as to why he was baptizing. And they said, then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the straps of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. In today's Gospel in Luke, we heard about how Mary gave birth to Jesus, who, how she went to Elizabeth, and within her womb, John the Baptist leapt, because John the Baptist, within the womb, recognized that the Christ was in his presence. Even from a little birth, a little baby, he understood that Christ was the one in whom he was going to prepare the way for him. And so the Gospel of John frames baptism in the context of the coming of Christ. When you go to read the other Gospels, you hear how baptism is about repentance. And that is true. That is what John baptism is. But in the context of the Gospel of John, John swings it to say that the baptism here is the point to the Christ. Indeed, John the Baptist is the one who is crying out in the wilderness. So, beloved, John the Baptist has made straight the way of the Lord. He has made known to all Israel, to all the church, and indeed to all the world, that Christ has indeed anointed and became the one who would take away the sins of the world. So Jesus is our final day prophet. He is the king who will rush into the kingdom of God and bring it into our midst and welcome us into eternal salvation. And so you have heard the one whom is Christ the one whom God has called Elijah, that is, John the Baptist. You have heard Christ say it. You have heard the last prophet of the Old Testament, John the Baptist, 
Speak and cry out in the wilderness. Prepare a place for the Lord. So follow in that way. Follow in the way by being a disciple, by walking in it. And as you walk in it, continue to study the word of God and to enrich yourself in that word like John the Baptist did. And remember the words of our Lord, that no one comes to the Father except through him. So indeed, Mary carried Jesus the only way to the Father. And indeed, Jesus went and prepared a place for us. And indeed, he is the atoning one, the one who took away from the sins of the world. And so when we look further into our text, he says, I am the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So as we go into Christmas, as we go into the day in which we celebrate the birth of Christ, remember that indeed he is the one who takes away the sin of the world. So the peace of God which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.